I'm a lecturer in the Department of Politics at Birkbeck and I'm Program Director of the BA in Global Politics and International Relations and that's what I'm going to be talking uh, to you about uh, this, this evening. Um, so let me start by saying something about the relevance of, of this degree for the, the world we live in. Um, the coronavirus pandemic, which we're all very acutely aware of at the moment, and which is shaping so many lives in, in uh, very unexpected ways, is clearly a matter of public health. It's a matter of concern for the natural sciences um, and for, for medicine. Uh, but very clearly, there are also big political implications and factors involved in the um, handling, the management or the, or the governance of the coronavirus. And we can see this across the world. Um, coronavirus is a global problem and it's a global political problem that different states are dealing with in different kinds of ways. So why, for example, has the response of you know, the United States to the coronavirus been very different to countries, say, like South Korea? That's the kind of question uh, that we can address in the study of politics. So the different kinds of institutions and practices of politics, the different sorts of political ideologies of the leaders and parties uh, involved in government have an effect on how the virus is conceived of and how it's, it's managed. And what we do on uh, politics and international relations, GPIR, as I'm going to call it from now on, otherwise it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, what we do is to try and provide you with the tools for analyzing how states work together in the international system and in conflict, of course, uh, and the broader politics of the global system, the international global political system. Uh, that shapes the character of politics in any one country or in any one region or in the relationship between those countries and regions. Okay, that's the general sort of intro. And what I'm going to do now is talk a little bit more specifically about Birkbeck, about our department, the Department of Politics, and the program. So, Birkbeck has been around for a couple of hundred years. It's part of the University of uh, London. And what's really special about Birkbeck is that ever since its beginnings, it's catered primarily to students who uh, work. Uh, and because of, of that, it has a unique teaching day. We do all our teaching in the evening. We start at six o'clock and we go on till uh, usually eight or nine o'clock. So in our days, of course, um, we have lots and lots of full-time students, particularly undergraduate students. Most of our students on the BA in global politics are full-time, but we've maintained that tradition of evening teaching. And when you come onto the campus at Birkbeck, you'll find in the daytime, it's still quite busy, there's still lots of people around, but things really kick off in the, in the evening when classes start at 6 p.m. And that's the time uh, when you'll find the library and the classrooms at their busiest and students going to lectures and seminars and uh, before and after having a coffee and a chat in the cafe and so on. So are really an evening um, college. And that works very well for many people who want to study both full time and uh, part time. So let's think a little bit more about politics at Birkbeck. Uh, my department, the Department of Politics, was founded in 1972. But there was the teaching of politics going on at Birkbeck even before that. We've had some very famous people in our classrooms. One of them was Karl Marx. Karl Marx came to listen to lectures on political economy uh, at Birkbeck uh, in the 
uh, 40s, 80s, 50s. Um, other famous people have passed through our doors who are very much involved in politics or were very much involved in politics. One of them was uh, Ramsay MacDonald, the first Labour uh, Prime Minister. Uh, the Webbs, who were also very important in the foundation of the Labour Party, were also uh, students at um, Birkbeck. And in more recent times, uh, from the department, we've had our own graduates who've gone on to have uh, prominent careers in, in politics. Uh, one of them at the moment is the Shadow Foreign Secretary, Lisa Nandi. Uh, she did uh, a master's degree with us uh, about 10 years ago. So um, there's always been a kind of emphasis on politics in and around Birkbeck. Our department, the Department of Politics, which is located at number 10 Gower Street, not number 10 Downing Street, but number 10 Gower Street, has been uh, here since 1972. Um, it was founded by three well-known figures in the study of, of politics and society, Bernard Crick, Paul Hurst, and Sami Zubeda. And um, at the start, uh, the department was actually a department of politics and sociology. Now, since 2009, we've been just the department of politics. But actually, our earlier title tells you a little bit about our approach, because we have a strong interdisciplinary focus in the department. So we study politics, but we also think that to understand politics, it's important to draw on other subjects, subjects like sociology, like history, like economics, like psychology, geography, and philosophy. Um, and we have uh, connections to and links to all these other departments across Birkbeck. And our teaching is informed by this broad interdisciplinary approach. We have a, a faculty, permanent members of staff of about 18 uh, people, and uh, all of them are active researchers. We're all doing research and publishing uh, books and articles on our particular areas of expertise, and we bring, uh, bring the research that we do into our, our teaching. So when you come and study with us, you're going to be taught by people who uh, are at the forefront of uh, knowledge in their particular field of expertise. Uh, we've got a wide range of courses. We don't just teach at undergraduate level. We also have a number, a large number of master's programs. Uh, we have PhD students, uh, and we also provide uh, for foundation year teaching and certificate teaching as well. At the moment, we have about 600 students in the department. And I'll say a little bit more about that last point at the, at the bottom uh, later on. But you know, we're not just concerned with teaching the curriculum. We have lots of events and extracurricular activities that, that go on throughout the year uh, that we hope uh, are useful and enjoyable to our students. OK. Let's move on now to talk then about the global politics degree, global politics and international relations. I said at the outset, um, the focus of uh, GPIR is on the international political system, the international political and economic system, um, and the way that that has emerged in the modern world and the way that politics in the broadest of struggles over cooperation, sorry, struggles of conflict and uh, forms of political cooperation have shaped that system over the course of the last few hundred years. I'll say something a little bit more about that when I turn to some of the key courses in, in a moment. But here's some of uh, the basic facts that you need to know about the, the degree. If you want to do the degree full time, uh, then you do that over three years and there are 12 uh, modules involved. You do four modules every year. And you can see on the slide here what those modules are. Um, I'm not going to go into these in, in detail for the moment. As I say, I'll, I'll come back to talking about three modules in particular, which are key uh, to the uh, degree. Um, but you'll see there uh, that 
well, perhaps you can't see there, but what it translates to, translates to is that you're coming in to study um, over three years between three and four nights. Also, one thing you might want to note here is that uh, as you go through the degree, uh, you have more choice of, of options. So that in the final year, you take one compulsory course, but also three option courses. Uh, or you can take two option courses and elect to do education in that final year. That's the structure for full-time. Uh, Part-time, uh, it's the same modules that you're doing, but you do them over four years instead of the, the three years. So what that means is that you are coming in for two to three nights a week uh, across the uh, degree. Okay. I said I'd talk about some key modules. All the modules, of course, on the degree are, are really important. Uh, as I say, some of these are, are compulsory. There are some option modules. But three of the key uh, compulsory modules are, are the ones here, Transformations in Modern Politics, Governing by Numbers, and War and Modern Society. So let me just say something briefly about each of these to give you a flavor of what we do on the degree. Transformations in Modern Politics is a that looks at the formation of the modern state and the modern international political system from around the 16th century uh, onwards. So it goes from that period, a period of, uh, of warfare in Europe and the rise of imperialism and colonialism, uh, to the 20th and the, of course, the 21st century, which we're now in, uh, and the many uh, uh, changes and transformations that have taken place in the nature of states and the relationship between them over that 400 year uh, period. So it has a strong, this module has a strong historical focus, but it also asks key conceptual questions about the nature of democracy, about the nature of authoritarian um, government. Uh, and about the nature of international institutions. So that's a, a module that you take in your first year, uh, Transformations in Modern Politics. Another module uh, that is compulsory in the second year uh, is Governing by Numbers. Now, on the face of it, this might look like a course on statistics, but uh, I hope that won't put anybody um, off. Uh, it's not a course which involves lots of number crunching and lots of maths and so on. Rather, it's a course that uh, alerts us to the importance of the way that numbers and statistics are used in politics um, in all kinds of areas. So you might think about the current coronavirus uh, epidemic, pandemic, and the way in much of the information about that is communicated in terms of numbers, graphs, and so on. We see every day graphs about the uh, increase in the number of cases or in the number of cases. What is that information relating to us, which is in some sense political? How are these numbers interpreted politically? These are important questions, and governing by numbers is a, an excellent course that gets you to think critically about the way in which we use uh, numbers and graphs and so on. Uh, in the presentation of ideas and discourses about politics. In the third year, or the uh, possibly the fourth year if you're doing the degree part-time, uh, another compulsory module is War and Modern Society. This uh, module looks at the history of uh, war, uh, particularly in the modern world, again, from about the 16th century onwards, though it has a uh, focus on war uh, in uh, earlier times as well. And it acknowledges the absolutely key role that war has played in shaping modern societies and modern politics and the modern international system. And the way that this uh, uh, course is taught um, also alerts us to the way which war has evolved and changed over the time, uh, and the way that it has interacted with social and economic and cultural factors um, to play a major role in influencing uh, the way in 
which we relate to one another and the way in which states relate to one another in the world uh, today. And it also has a focus on uh, contemporary problems to do with war, problems with nuclear weapons, uh, like uh, gen uh, conflicts that involve genocide, and so on. So that's another key uh, module uh, for the Global Politics and International Relations degree. Okay, uh, I'm going to move on now to talk about some other practicalities, teaching and learning. Um, you will attend lectures and seminars, as I say, about uh, depending on whether you're doing it part time or full time, between two and four evenings per, per week. Uh, lectures are usually about 50 minutes to an hour um, long, um, and the lecturer will give a presentation to the lecture, um, and uh, that will also bring in the reading that you will do for every every week, and that reading is uh, presented to you at the beginning of the year in, uh, in the module handbook that you're, you're given. And usually following the lecture, there'll be a seminar. And the uh, seminar is an opportunity for you to discuss the lecture, to discuss the reading that you've done, that week to look at particular questions that your uh, seminar tutor will have given you, um, to have maybe group presentations, individual presentations, maybe debates, and so on. So seminars, uh, lectures are very important for you um, gathering information about the topic that you're doing for that week. But seminars are absolutely crucial for improving and, and deepening your understanding of, of the topic and also a great opportunity to learn uh, with your, um, your colleagues. Uh, the other thing we need to mention here, of course, is that we have structured lectures and seminars, but most of the work that you will be doing is not in the classroom, but outside of it. Um, you will need to be reading to prepare for lectures and seminars. Uh, you will be um, writing up your notes from the lecture and the seminar, you will be preparing for essays, you'll be writing essays, you'll be preparing for exams and so on. So the bulk of what you do is like the, the classroom uh, and uh, we uh, absolutely want to, to help you uh, to structure your time and organize your time outside the classroom so that you can get through the work that you need to to do really well. But the key thing here, of course, is that that kind of study is down to you. It's your independent study. Uh, so it's important to get into a, a routine and into a set of practices that allow you to, to learn as effectively as you can outside of the, the classroom. Um, let's move on now to assessment, how the degree is uh, assessed. And in the department, we have a mixed uh, we have mixed forms of assessment. Um, so uh, much of what you do will be, particularly in the second and third years, will be in the form of essays and exams, though we're going partly to do with what's happening at the moment with the coronavirus. We're going through some changes to how we organize exams at the moment. Um, but then on other modules, we have a diversity of forms of assessment. For them can include things like essay plans and bibliographic exercises, book reviews, quizzes, group presentations. So uh, we're not absolutely stuck on the so-called traditional ways of assessing, uh, which used to be mainly through um, unseen examinations. We are constantly changing and diversifying our forms of assessment uh, to suit the modern world and the conditions under which you find yourselves uh, studying. Next, let's talk very briefly about support. I'm not going to go through all of these roles that I, I put down here, but the important point about this is that if you come and study with us, uh, you will have a uh, large number of support resources. Um, so they include people like myself as the, the director, the program director for global politics and international relations. Uh, they include people like personal tutors, but there's also resources outside of the department which you can uh, draw on if you need further support, like the Student Union and the Disabilities. 
So the key thing here is that if you have a problem, we can help you. Uh, and a good thing to, to do is if you do come and study with us is to, uh, is to understand that and to try and foresee any problems before they come along and to know where you can go to get, get support. And as I say, um, all of these people and all of these uh, offices here uh, are available to you to provide that support. Okay, uh, I'm nearly at the end. Uh, I'm just going to mention uh, some of the, the links that you can have to access further information. Uh, you see there the college website, the department's uh, website, which has lots of useful and relevant information on it if you're thinking about applying. Uh, and below that, then, you've got two websites which go through in some more detail um, the, uh, the structure of the uh, degrees that I was showing you before, for full-time and part-time. We also have uh, an increasingly uh, uh, significant social media presence. So um, we operate a departmental blog, uh, number 10 Gow Street, where many of us who work in the department and people from outside the department um, contribute pieces on what's going on in politics today and how we can understand these things. things you know, we've got quite a few blogs now on, on COVID-19, on the pandemic, but also, you know, on other areas in which we have experts, whether it be Brexit, whether it be uh, the politics of Donald Trump, whether it be, uh, you know, the uh, changes that are taking place on a daily basis to uh, the, the balance of ships between uh, or within the international system. We have uh, all kinds of blogs on these things. Uh, we also have a, uh, a presence on Twitter. You can see our Twitter handle there at BBK Politics. And uh, I want to mention here uh, the Centre for British uh, Political Life. It's a research centre that we run out of the uh, department, but it, it also puts on a number of events throughout the year. I was talking before about um, the events that we, we put on that are outside the curriculum, and the centre plays a very important part in this. Now, uh, we call it the Centre for British Political Life, and there is a focus on Britain, but actually there are lots of events that we do through the centre uh, which touch on the subjects that are key to uh, global politics and international relations. So it's not a narrowly, uh, it's not a narrow focus on what's going on in Westminster politics, but we talk about uh, Britain in relationship to events that are going on all around the world, uh, whether that be things like uh, you know, Brexit, which has implications for the European Union, or whether it be Britain's relationships uh, with uh, China or the United States, uh, or uh, whether it be indeed the, the, the pandemic that's going on at the moment, which is, as we were saying earlier, has pretty sort of global uh, effects. And, um, uh, implications. Uh, and um, we also what we do is uh, when we have events that we, we record them, um, uh, there are a number of podcasts that you can sample at that last link uh, there on, on SoundCloud. Um, and um, we're going to put some of these links up in the, in the chat uh, so you can see them there uh, for afterwards. Okay, uh, I think that's all I've got to say about the, the program. Uh, I am now available for any, any questions on, on chat, uh, if anybody has anything they want to, to ask. Any questions? Okay. So I'm not seeing any uh, coming up. Uh, so uh, the last thing I'll, I'll say then is that uh, I hope you'll uh, have uh, a look uh, at the links have a look at the further information about the degree. 
uh, you can see the prospectus on online, and of course you can uh, apply to Birkbeck uh, online as, as well. Uh, in fact, that's the way that we do applications nowadays, uh, nowadays on online. Uh, and my advice would be that if you, you know, if you do want to apply to us, try and get your, your application in as, as early as possible. Uh, and then uh, hopefully when you're accepted to come and study with us, um, you'll, be, you'll be all ready uh, for when we start in the, in the autumn. Okay, thanks very much. I'm going to sign off. Thank you. Goodbye.